Little Jake woke up in the morning. Wiped the sleep from his eyes. He knew something was important. Something that money can't buy. All the while in the back of his head. Something was calling his name. It was hanging there by a thread. Then the idea burst into flames. He knew we had to go to the show. It was the only matter of time. <laughs> There was a very special writer by the name of Jason Grinder. <laughs> okay, welcome back to the show. It's been a while since me and Lonnie did a podcast. Uh, we have a really important guest today, Jason Crittenden. Super special, super More important. Than okay. <laughs> but uh, me and Lonnie did a couple of video podcasts. Uh, not really podcasts. They're, yeah, they're kind of, you call them vlogs or whatever you want to call them, but. It's for their YouTube channel, and. Uh, they might be kind of like time lapsey, like we're going to chop them down. Yeah, more on that. <laughs> Today we're going to have a lot of laughs. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully there is a, uh... yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, introduce yourself, Jason. Uh, yeah, Jason Crittenden. I'm a writer, director. I'm independent level right now, working my way up to the big leagues, which is studio, but I, I really enjoy I've been independent level for several years. Uh, well, let's see, at least the last six working anyway, and then before that, it was a talent agency, and then before that, I mean, we can keep going back. So a lot, a jumble of stuff. A jumble of stuff, but, I, but predominantly, it's been in the uh, film industry. That's been my passion, and so that's... Um, I mean, what I've been doing lately is, uh, you know, pursuing that and, and living that and actually making uh, somewhat of a living at it, you know. That's awesome. Badass. Yeah. So how did you, how did you get involved in film and everything? Well, I would say film, like a lot of us, I mean, either you start when you're younger, when your parents share films with you or you experience it on your own, you know, you sneak in a movie theater with, you know, rated R film you're not supposed to see or something like that. Or you, you know, like I used to do with my younger brothers, we would go see two or three movies at a time. Sorry, a couple cinemas. We'd, we'd didn't pay for all three we maybe pay for the first one and stay <laughs> but we were young kids and it was a lot of fun and um so it, it that's where the like the love cinema and film came and then when i started to like explore outward and think of you know not just like the commercial films but like films that might have been became commercial like lawrence of arabia stuff like that by david lean you know those kind of films that are awe inspiring those are what really drew me to what films could be you know like star wars is obviously a great go-to but for this it was like in terms of of me growing up with movies I mean I remember sometimes I'd be sick maybe not completely sick but uh, I would you know maybe be faking it maybe not and but mom would always rent Star Wars trilogy and that was a big deal and then I remember uh, you know as I was expanding my repertoire in films and getting older and like I saw Scarface Al Pacino and I was like what the heck is this like how can you take it even because I'd seen Platoon before that you know Oliver Stone and you know whatever but like uh, anyway so that's I'm trying to give you like my little how I became so much interested in film and then in college you know of Oregon was where the writing aspect came in. Like I started as the English major and uh, was reading like Chaucer and Lord Byron and, and these amazing authors and Mary Shelley. I remember reading uh, Frankenstein, which is actually the title of what is it? A modern Prometheus theory, I think is the the real title of it. Yeah, I mean, it's not, and people always mistake Frankenstein as the monster when it's really right. people, you know. So yeah. anyway, so th those kind of things. So, and then I combined film and with the passion of writing. And I remember telling my parents, I was like, hey, this is what I want to do. And they're like, go for it, you know, and that's what I'm doing so I mean it's it's uh I'm very fortunate because there's there's you know a lot of people that are still trying to make it and I'm not like saying I've made it but like I've, I've been fortunate with small little successes here and there so I guess that's me rambling on and on but that's uh well, trying, trying to give you an idea trying to break it down for you <laughs> did you when when I was growing up we, yeah. we got we had two video cameras and okay. we, would, we would always make our start short films right Mostly horror films. Yeah. Oh, horror yeah, it films. We were making turn okay. into goofing around and laughing. Yeah. Half a quarter of the way through it. Yeah, yeah. Do you start doing stuff like that? Absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing. Having two younger brothers. My sister actually, she was involved. My older sister Haley, she was involved with. We did a bunch of like special newscasts and stuff like that. And then my brothers and I, we actually made action adventure films around the house, and um, it was, you know, it was, so this was like what the late '80s. 
Um, I was probably 10, what was it, 10, 11, whatever. And so my younger brothers, we would make these movies and they would end up revolving around like drug cartels. And it was like, <laughs> you know, these little kids running around with these fake guns. And this is before it was orange guns, you know, it was like actually looked real, which is, you know, we can talk about that if you guys want to, but it was, that's, yeah, we got started by doing that. And I remember using, uh, at one time, my youngest brother, Sean, we had to do like stunt doubles. So I would, cause he was too young and like we were wanted somebody to fall down the stairs. So like I got on my knees and fell down the stairs. It was like mm -hmm. we definitely did those kind of things and we, we had we would stuff dolls and throw them off cliffs i was just about to say that <laughs> and that's, halfway down the head would fall off and we have to go get it again oh that's oh, okay so for us it was the same kind of idea i was just about to get to that is that it was a stuffed animal that we would dress as whoever the actor previously was and then shoot from like a couple stories down and then you would have my actor who uh, the actor who i think it was sean my youngest brother and he would scream and we'd throw this thing out the window and he'd be like ah and like you know that's we were trying to make movies it was um yeah and i think somewhere my mom has those the you know there was def definitely made short films out of it so yeah that's definitely it was one of those things to inspire the creative passion out of all the things we yeah. filmed i don't know if we finished one thing you didn't there, there are a lot of funny things they, they never had an ending there was really no plot. There was no plot. See, that's, I think I was, that's where my, my, uh, pseudo OCD comes in is that there was definitely had to be, okay, we're done. That's the end. And oops, sorry, I clapped. But, um, it, it's, you, you, had, had, you had OCD and we had ADD. Well, you had ADD. That's true. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, that's, uh, and that's whatever it is. But they didn't actually, I think it was after, you know, the, the next, like five years after me is when they actually started saying, hey, you need to take Ritalin or whatever, because, like, that was none of that for us. Like, I remember hearing about that, and I was like, that sounds like a terrible idea. Like, just let people grow up naturally, you know, don't give them yeah. <laughs> narcotics, basically, is what they are. Anyway, that's a happy note. <laughs> So you brought these books. Yes. Well, this is just because the this is some literature. The, so most recently, this is something I should have done years ago. Is gone to the American it's film market. What's that? It's making a lot of noise. Is it a lot? It was, oh, the it. book is okay. Well, so anyway, well, it's a good book. It's just it, basically the American film market. There's three main major markets for the independent filmmaker. You know, whether you're a writer, director. I met music people. I met animators. It's it's um, in uh, Santa Monica. That's where this one was. And then there's the Berlin wait, one. Wait. Yeah. So it was like two weeks ago you went it was down yeah to Santa so Monica? last week yeah down Santa Monica and then there's this one Berlin and then the other one is Cam a Cam Film Festival but it's also a marketplace for independent film so you know there's difference between a festival and a conference so this one was an actual conference but it was a marketplace so people bring what happens at this conference so basically this one I was I was reading the most recent reports and like over 7,000 so, uh, 7,400 people showed up from all over the world different film you know filmmakers writers directors producers financiers like everything you can think of um, from all over the world we're congregating like one night we went out it was me and a couple of uh, British filmmakers fantastic guys that we just had a great time it was a couple other birthdays we ended up with filmmakers from Egypt there was people from Dubai Toronto uh, Brazil I mean it was like a world unite for film and it was really interesting I mean it's just a collection of people and obviously there's a lot of buying and selling and deals going on uh, I think it was something like over a billion dollars worth of money, you know, um, uh, that's being spent over that, you know, I think it's a six, seven day period. And then continuing on to that where the deals are made, like, or people that you talk to and that you converse with and, you know, make deals after the fact. So Did you accomplish what you thought. Yeah, it was actually, it was uh, fantastic. I, there's a couple different companies that I spoke with, um, specifically one of them's uh, Sun Studios. They're out in Florida and we're working on a very unique concept that I talked to them about and they're very interested in and I can't really talk too much about it, but it's really, it's a, it's a true story, historical, and it's something that should be in history books. And I was going to have some questions, but yeah. I didn't know how well, to No, it's okay. I just can talk until you cut me off and ask me questions and it's, it's all good. I, I <laughs> Because it's, it was really fascinating, this, this experience, and so I'm totally happy to talk about it. And again, thanks for inviting me to come was, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Was it your first time doing it? It was. Like yeah, it was the absolute first time one so that's like I was saying I should have done this a long time ago because it's just in, in terms of the immersion of the people and the collection of people that you can meet it's just fascinating you know there's a big uh, Nigerian influx that, in terms of financing distribution and uh, what was his name uh, Hakeem Kazim is a great actor and I've seen him on the show um, uh, the pirate show that they just canceled on Star. Well, they didn't cancel it, ran its route, you know, it was a series ender. And uh, it, just people like that you wouldn't expect to meet, but then, like, all of a sudden, you stand right in front of you, like, hey, I know what's going on, I know who you are, and 
keep doing the great work, whatever. It's just like, you never know you're going to meet, but at the same time, you never know what you're going to do and the, you know, the potential of what could happen. Is that, is that, you know, does that make sense? Did you make any deals? Well, no, the deals are forthcoming. So that's the, there's definitely, um, I can say there's options agreements, stuff like that, but there are deals that are in the works. So it's a very positive process when something like that happens because, you know, there's a lot of people like, Hey, you know, give you a call. Let me read this. Let me read that specifically right now. I'm focused on the writing and the directing, but you have to get it out there. So for people to actually read your work, it's fantastic. And then when they read your work and then they're like, Oh, you're actually not kidding around. You have worked hard to hone your craft and you really are a writer. You know, it's a, it's a different experience. And then they take you even more seriously and like, well, you know, I love this, but maybe this isn't for us, but what else you got? So there's many different ways to so make what it happen. happens. You, you go with a stack of scripts and they literally, no, I'm sure they, they do read back in the day. Things. I'm sure they did that. But you got to think about today. It's the digital age, you know? So people are just like flash drives, wi fis or like, I remember a lot of times I was showing, um, proof of concept videos, what you shoot, you basically there's, uh, you can write a script, you can shoot a proof of concept. A lot of people know about this. Like a trailer. Yeah. It's like a trailer in essence, but there's ones you can do six minute long. So you can cut a trailer from that. There's there's, you know, this people do this in the car like, business. It's kind of like an elevator pitch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like an elevator pitch, but it's more of a visual one. Right. It's like, you know, you can see it. So that's the other thing. Like when you're saying, do you take scripts? No, it's more of like pitching and talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's and that's when you're saying you're talking about an elevator Probably pitch. a lot of bullshit. Oh, I'm sure there is. And, and it's just waiting your way through it. And like the best way to avoid that is just be real. And, and people respond to that for the most part. You just can't. You know, you can't bullshit a bullshitter, so there's so many bullshitters, so why bullshit? Is that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's, my mom's going to be mad, like, swearing so much, but anyway. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, I was quoting you, so I could say I was paraphrasing you. It, was, it wasn't my own direct swearing. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't invent that. I heard it from Lonnie. Lonnie. I, I have, like, said almost nothing. <laughs> right. No, it's okay. Well, it's, we, we're just meeting. So I'll, let me ask you a question, Lonnie. So let's talk about pitching. So I know you're writing a book right now. Is this correct? Is this uh, common knowledge or not? I've, I've talked, talked You've about, talked about it, it on the podcast. Okay. So, I mean, I haven't really talked about what it is. Okay. Much, okay. But, uh... Yeah, I've been. I don't well, have well, any. I feel like Lonnie's really loud for some reason. Is this mic really sensitive? I don't know. Or put the put one up or something. One of the things up. I've got him up a little bit because he's usually quieter. He's like <laughs> blasting. <laughs> Am I okay. too loud? That's yeah. way better. Right. Am I too loud? No, you're good. No, you're good. All right. So uh, that's yeah. So I don't have any formal training. Right. Like I work a day job. I, sure. So, but I kind of just got into it like a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and I started listening to a lot of podcasts. Uh, there's one specifically called Story Grid Podcast. Mm -hmm. This is the what? Story Grid Podcast. Story Grid, okay. So it's this guy named Sean Coyne. He works with, uh, do you know who Stephen Pressfield is? Uh, Pressfield, the name sounds familiar. I don't know he, them personally. No. He's done some scripts. Okay. But uh, uh, anyways, they go through and they break it down into like a, a mathematical equation on kind of how, Difficult how to structure. Or how to structure. Oh, right. Like any kind of story. Like, sure, sure. You know, breaking it down into... Like one way they describe it is like a tree. You got yeah. you got a trunk and then you got branches mm -hmm. and leaves and yep. the stems and the leaves. Sure, sure. The other one is the you talk about the skeleton, then you add you know the guts, then you add the uh, muscles, yeah. tendons, and then you add the skin, then it's you like add the same, everything. Yeah, same kind of idea. So there is different ways, but it is it's you, you start from not a lot and you got to build up big. And and people they they it seems more often that the writers don't get the respect that they are due, but you can't really have a story without a script. I mean, let's be honest, unless you're doing reality TV, which even then they have some scripted elements, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's part of the, there's you know, a big difference between script writing and, and yeah. writing a novel, right? Absolutely. There's a huge difference, but I mean, I think for me personally, cause I started with uh, long form writing, which I still love. And one day I'll finish my great American novel. You know, I'm five chapters into it and it'll get done, but it's, uh, that's what I started in college. And, but it's, screenwriting is so much you have to limit what you talk about because like in a book you could spend a page talking about how somebody twiddles a sucker in their thing uh, fingers yeah. you know what i mean and uh, a script you need to get it in like five five words or less four or five words right right because it's 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 about it's because it's not really told like a lot of books are told in like first person or third person sure with a script i mean how does that work is it's, that it's more omniscient it's kind of like you're all knowing all saying kind of the the reader you're, you're writing for the reader so to speak or sometimes you're writing for you know i've had instances where I write for specific actors, knowing that they're interested in the story and then you want to get them attached and then there's a way, you know, that's another way to get a film made. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
Anyway, yeah. I just saw a trailer for something. What was for, it? Uh, the the uh, something. Wow, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I want to see the sequel. Your trailer for uh. Oh my! The, oh, the uh, teaser trailer for Poacher. Poacher. Yeah. yeah. So that was one. So we did. That's that's an example of we did a proof of concept. The original one was like basically it's almost like a short film. The co-director on that, Peter, he he, he doesn't consider it a short film, but he you know he we shot as a proof concept, and then from that we cut the teaser trailer that you saw, which is basically uh, it was like ninety minutes. No, no, that was only like sixty seconds long, mm -hmm. but it gives you an idea, you know, just a little taste of the story, and also what can be done for not uh, bags and bags of money, but the production budget, uh, production value is high. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't. It, it looks really good on screen. That's the most important thing. I mean, obviously, acting and s script before that is more important. But um, it, it's definitely. It, it's just showing what you can do. It's like, hey, look what we can do without a, 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 you know bags and bags of money. So just give us like one bag of money and see what we can do. There you go. <laughs> you know, just one. <laughs> Yeah. So how many scripts are you working on? Uh, at a time? I try to well, keep... Well, okay. not, not writing necessarily, okay. but how many scripts are you trying to get... Okay, so there's... Well, there's... So I've had, I've had scripts option, bought, and uh, straight up sold. The whole thing is you want to get them produced. That's the hardest thing. And I, I've known writers that are in the business for, you know, over a decade, and they've made, you know, bucket loads of money on a different end. So we're talking about bags and bucket loads, because I think back, the bucket loads you're earning, whereas bags are like Scrooge and Duff, they're just kind of handed to you. Mm -hmm. Think about that on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, it, it's it, and, and uh, I know people. Like I said, they work for years in the industry and and making good money. And sometimes it doesn't pan out in the end, and you never know. So the main thing, just like with anything, you got to keep grinding. You got to keep hustling. Literally, it's, literally anything. It could be literally anything. I mean, it applies to anything. And that's why, you know, when I was talking about proof of concept. That's nothing new. That's like, but it's just something like in the last, I would say five five years. Not a full decade, but at least the last five. I mean, you can go online, and well, actually, it goes back to two thousand eight. Really, because there was this guy. I think it was Buenos Aires. It's terrible. I wish I had like Siri right here. I could. But hey, what was that? But anyway, it's this amazing short film. The guy shot for like a couple thousand bucks, and it's basically about an alien invasion. Uh, I think it's called uh, Attack de Panico or something just really cool. And it's there's this kid on a beach, and it's amazing. I mean, and he shot for next to nothing, and then it spread like wildfire, and he got uh, signed a deal with I can't remember Universal or somebody. So anyway, th that's that's another, it's a whole different side story. There was an alien movie that they made that did a similar thing. Um, anyway, yeah. So another that's a sidebar. Huh? Yeah, it's really just about self awareness and yeah. being smart. Yeah, and what the market is craving. I mean, there's always different stuff going on. Like horror films are never going to go away. But right now, there's, excuse me, there's an uptick in westerns going on right now. If you look at. Um, Excuse me. What was it? Um, uh, Tango. No, no, no. Well, that definitely. And then uh, you know, Hateful Eight. I still think that's a great movie. It's a great like Agatha Christie type murder mystery. Realistically, I mean, if people weren't as happy, I think it was also the runtime. People just couldn't sit that long. I, I like when films do that. It's like you know. Um, anyway, so what, what, sorry. What was your question? <laughs> uh, what did I say? No, it was about... What did uh, you say? You said something. Oh, I'm sure I said something. <laughs> I'm the guest. <laughs> you're, you're talking about what kind of films are popular. Oh, okay, yeah. What kind of films? So, Westerns. Thank you very much, Lonnie. Um, so, it, it, like, uh, what is it? The Steven Soderbergh one with Scott Franks, like the main writer on it. It's for Netflix. Oh, is that um, Longmire? No, Longmire, that's a, that's like a modern-day Western. Right. This is this is like a straight-up uh, original oh, Western. Oh, uh, there's... The one? Are you talking about the one with like the where the building the train? Uh, yeah, uh, no, that's Hell on Wheels. So that's Hell a TV Wheels. show. That one already came out. And that was fantastic. I watched all of that. Yeah. that. That was really well done. So you're talking about films? Uh, it's coming up, but it's Netflix. It's going to be a limited mini series, and this okay. is terrible. It's called Godless. Now it came back to me. It's called Godless okay. with Jeff Daniels. Uh, this guy Jack O'Connell's an Irish actor, but he's he's been in so much, and you've seen him, but you're really going to know who he is after this. And his Soderbergh was like I think the creator with Scott Frank. You're gonna have to Google me and check that one or whatever. But you're, you're just talking about this. You have nothing to do with it. No, I wish. No, I wish I did. Um, but I have a funny story about Steven Soderbergh. If you guys want to talk about that later, it's pretty cool. Um, and then there's another western with Christian Bale coming out called Hostiles that looks amazing. Is that the one where he got really fat? No, all <laughs> no fat. That, that's for Cheney. He, he's playing Cheney for that one. That's oh. an Adam McKay film. That's they're doing another kind of like. Um, uh, uh, not a spoof. They're doing it straight up, just like they did with the McCain story. Mm -hmm. um, when it was um, who was it? Uh, Ed Harris as Ed McCain, uh, John McCain. Mm -hmm. Remember? And then Woody Harrelson was in it. And yeah. then did you guys see that one? I did. I didn't it see was, it. Oh, I, I highly recommend watching it. That was really good. I think it was HBO. Um, 
But anyway, then there's another Western. They just announced Deadwood. So we're still on the topic of Western. So I'm trying to keep coming back because otherwise I'll lose my train of thought because we've got a lot to talk about. So gotcha. so um, the other one was Deadwood. They just announced they're going to do a movie on that. Did you guys watch I the series? I was a late comer to that show. I've been slacking on watching shows. Well, this one was, it came out years ago and it's just, it's on HBO. It's fantastic. That's another one I recommend. But anyway, the point being, Westerns are back in the mix and I've got one of those that's also out of the mix. So. Nice. So it's, Which I'm not done with yet. Yeah, so I, well, you you uh, you'll get there, and you know, you're, well, you're getting to the crazy stuff too. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. A lot's been going on. A lot's been going on. Well, no, it's I, fun. Uh, I, I love sharing. Third of the way through it before you went to uh, went down to AFM. Yeah, and then you yeah. then you read um, Protect the Surf for me real quick. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't think we can talk about anything. Like no, that one's secretive too. Well, I mean, it's so dumb to say that, but it's really like I even reached out to certain people and we're like, "Hey, should I talk about this?" They're like, "No, not yet. Wait till we can officially announce it, and then you, then, then maybe they'll have you back if they invite you back, and then you can announce you guys get the first scoop or something like that." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know it's really weird, and but it's really cool at the same time because there's been so many different things where it's so close yet so far away, and so so many things that have worked out. So it's it's like you keep it keep it close to your chest, and especially when and the people that will potentially be your business partners say, hey, keep it to your chest, then you keep it to your chest. That's good. <laughs> I, was so, I was going to ask you if Lonnie could read one of them. Or, absolutely. Or I'd love to share. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would love to share. He just started writing, and he it's a different format, but well, but no, be interested in doing it. I would be, and I'd be interested in reading your work as well, because that's, you know, like I said, that was my first calling was long-form writing, and then screenwriting just came naturally to me because I combined, like I said, movies and uh, imagery yeah well movies and love of writing so I combine the two of those because I also did nonfiction writing back in that day too so anyway cool so <laughs> how, how much time do you put into making even just one of these scripts so writing one screenplay it just depends so for example the western that Josh is going to finish reading um and then we can talk about that ne next time if you want. Can we? We can, can we? talk about the story. Well, how comes to Montana? We'll be able to because that one's not officially option. That one we, we can talk about. I can tell you that um, uh, I still have actors like Tom Berenger involved. Mm -hmm. um, he's somebody we attached a couple years ago, and he most people remember him from like Platoon, where he was Academy nominated actor, um, or he won a couple years ago. He won the Golden Globe for Hatfield McCoys, another western. With Kevin Costner, I don't know if you guys saw that. It was really good. So what's it waiting on? He's been attached. For so he's years. been attached. So it's just getting the all the right rest of the pieces. We had a director that was attached, and then that went away, or they went away because they had another job that came right away, and then so they became dis. I mean, this. So there's so many different things can mm -hmm. happen, but the um, the point being is with Tom Berenger involved, and then also the great actor Ray Ray Berry, um, who he was the training day. Uh, it's training day. There's so many Born on the Fourth of July are like older movies, but he was unjustified. Did you guys watch that show? Man, I feel like I'm Dude, watching. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to do a list. We're going to do a list of shows. We'll listen to this podcast <laughs> yeah, over again. If we, if I watch those shows, I'd be gone for six months. Well, no, because there, there's only, if you span it out and you give yourself time, because like I have to write. I have other things to do. I'm married. I have a life. Like, But if I, I make time to watch those things because they influence me not as a writer, but a lot of them have, you know, obviously amazing messages. You want to have the great themes and, you know, story elements and stuff like that. But um, I just think it's highly important to... Engage, especially right now, it's the golden age of television. So you yeah. guys, you know, Game of Thrones. Especially for you guys watching? Ind independent people. Oh, yes, exactly. I watched Netflix three episodes of Game of Thrones. Have you watched? Okay. Have you, what about three episodes? I saw the first episode, oh and, then I, and, I, and then I pulled back, okay. and I bought the audiobook, and now I'm starting. Oh, to the okay. So, wow. So you were so doing, okay. I'm going to try to go for, from the other angle. That's see interesting. See if I make it past the first I'd, I'd be interested to talk about that, because I have not read word one of the books, because I just want to see the... I actually rewatched the entire series um, from season one to episode seven after the ending because I was like I forgot how good it is and then you season watch season one to episode seven no season one to ep uh, season seven oh season seven. so did I what are you correcting did I say it wrong we'll have to listen to it later um, the anyway I re it's one of the best shows on television of all time like no joke there's no doubt and it'll go down that way when it's all done with when it's the series is over um, yeah. so I highly recommend that so justified I'm gonna write a list here's for you guys my, here's my thing. I gotta write a list yeah here's <laughs> my thing about Game of Thrones like okay. I, well, I've watched three episodes in a row. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. How one, far two, apart? That's one, the key. One, two, three. Right you... in a row. One, okay. two, three. Okay. And it, it was good. The What's the uh, what's the short guy's name? What's his name? The actor or the, the character? Actor. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. He I plays love that. Tyrion. He's, he plays he's Tyrion. Hilarious. Yes. Um, he was the most redeeming part about it, in my opinion. Well, and he is pretty Episode much one, two, three. one of them, like the whole shows too. Yeah, yeah. 
but I feel like there's so much to learn about this entire world yeah. that it was like overwhelming. And it was like, hey, that's fine. Right away. I think that happens to a lot of people and I get it because it is a serious commitment. But the thing is they're only an hour long and the longest season's only 10 hours or 10 episodes. So that's only yeah, 10 hours. It wasn't enough to hook me because there was so much stuff going on. So here's an idea for you because this will help. They should have done this in the beginning. They only did this for last season. They released like a three to four minute. It's all, it's an animation video, but it's not like anime it's animation like old school and it tells stories of the families and kind of gives you this is what happened until now you know what i mean like it, it, it kind of you know what i'm saying so it sets everything up so then you're like picking up the names yeah and so it like makes everything make more sense and you're like more in tune you're more interested but i think that's what it was well so the other thing i would suggest is try the first three again and if you're like no i don't get it then start with do do what, uh, what lonnie's doing in um, i think that's the part of why yeah. i wanted to do that is yeah. because I would because when people write books, they tend to go into more detail and back history because that can get a little boring. Yeah, if you're watching a TV show and they're like, so you watch you watch episode one. I watched episode one and then, and, and then you're, same thing. And you're like, and you're just like, hey, I want to go read it. Like part of it is sometimes I'm just I act so anti-conformist when it comes to a new movement. Right. Where like everybody's watching. I'm, I was the same way. I, I don't want to do it, but there there was something about it that was definitely interesting. Got gotcha. you. Like. Uh, because I've heard enough about it through the internet and other people. That it's it's mostly kind of, you know, wars of different noble families, right? Sure. I mean, this is it's very Shakespearean. It's very you know, it's old school like English or whatever old school history, but it's it's fantasy. You know, at right. the same there's dragons flying for crying out loud. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, uh, so what I would recommend. So you're doing the books, Lonnie. So when you're done with that. Watch, watch. I mean, it's so they're so amazing visually, and they capture as much as they can in those epic books. And I don't, like I said, I haven't read Word One yet because I don't want to spoil anything. You know what I mean? So I, I was like you. So going back to what you said, um, people were like, "Hey, you have you seen Game of Thrones? You got to watch this." And I remember, what was it Facebook was exploding with the Red Wedding and the Blood Wedding or whatever it's called, and the end of season three. Well, no, that. yeah, exactly. I know that. And, and so people kept saying, "I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do it." It's like I'm still not on Snapchat. I still am not. I don't tweet. I don't. You know, being on Facebook that took me forever so finally getting Game of Thrones was a big deal you know what I mean and so I highly recommend well I guess you're going to do the book first but just try the first three again if you're like I don't get it then maybe read the book or do the audio book how about that Take the doctor's orders <laughs> I don't well, think he's going to take you seriously no? there oh, okay. are so many things recommended to me okay. constantly that what's on the top of your list <laughs> do you like I need to watch uh, this or I've what? been watching Shark Tank what? <laughs> okay, well, that's cool. I mean, that's at least there's original stuff going on there. It's not all scripted. I mean, it's um, so what shows do you watch? If you had to watch a sh do you watch what a show? What shows am I watching right yes. now? Yes, what do you like? Tank. No, come on, bro. There's gotta Literally. be more than one show. What do you just Here, we'll, we'll give you a second to think about well, okay. No, I, I, uh, I watched this show, uh, Friends from College. For, okay, how was that? Friends with Fiat. Was that any good with Fred Savage? And I haven't seen it yet. Michael Key or. Yeah. One of the Key and Peele guys. One of the Key, one of the yeah. key and Peele guys, the yeah. tall guy. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, no, it's the other one because Peele did Get Out, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was so pretty So Peele good. did. That was, that was really well done. Yeah. Oh, Get Out was amazing. Yeah, that's Great. actually, that's going to be up for a bunch of awards. They actually submitted in a musical or comedy for Golden Globes, which is pretty weird. It was really good. Instead of doing drama. I don't know how funny it was. The, <laughs> well, I know because... The guy on the phone, the fat guy, was I, pretty funny. I don't know. Yeah, that's about... But, I mean, the, most of it was... I, maybe... You know, I didn't finish the article, but um, I started reading about today why they did it. So, I'll, I'll report back next time. <laughs> but Friends from College yeah. was good. Uh, oh, Ozarks. Oh, that was fantastic. Amazing okay, show. Yeah, they picked that up for season that's two. That's my fa new favorite show. That, okay, there you go. All right, so we've reached, we've reached, so that's good. So then you'll like Justified. Watch that. It's on Amazon. You got all seven seasons of that, or six seasons. And that Ray Berry, that's the actor, he's in the Western that I'm writing. It's on Netflix. That I wrote. Anyway, yeah, it's on, no, Amazon. It's not on Netflix yet. I have Amazon. Get Amazon. Get his password. Just be a pal. <laughs> just be like, hey, oh, just watch, you know watch you your Amazon that. friend. <laughs> yeah, you know you do. Um, anyway, yeah, watch that too, Justified. TV shows. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, unless it's the thing is, you, you're enlisting for a long period of time, as opposed to like one season long. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, oh, that's it. That's all you get. So, um, 
what was that show with Ray Romano? Men of a certain age. It was great. There was only like oh, yeah, one. Oh yeah, that was a good was, show. They, I that they, show. they cut it short. It had, yeah. it had at least two more seasons to go. So I, I wanted, this was a couple years ago. I was still mad about that. But like Longmire, you I'm brought, still mad. Yeah, you're still mad. Well, Longmire, you brought that up, Lonnie. That's only the only reason that show's still around is because of the fans. Yeah, like they actually Netflix picked them up. They met Netflix. They got canceled, and then Netflix like we see value there, and they're Netflix. That talk about cool. the way of the future. Those guys. Like are, I know a lot. Except of they got rid of Always like Sunny for some reason. Always Sunny. That's that's pretty funny show. Yeah, that's that was a, a Fox deal, something to do with like Fox doesn't want their stuff on Netflix anymore or something. It's on Hulu. Like well, they're yeah. separating. I mean, it's like Disney started their own streaming service. I think Netflix yeah. is still gonna be the Titan. It doesn't matter, but Hulu and Amazon are really Amazon's up there, and Hulu is, is catching up with you know they had a lot of success with all the award season. The thing about Hulu is they, for some reason, with a lot of shows, they only have like five. Original shows? No, they only have like five episodes. Like they don't have all the seasons. Oh, for some you know shows. what? I'll complain about that because uh, Rockford Files, dude. I got into that. You guys remember that? It's an old '70s show. Okay, it's like a, a old cop show. Or, I mean, excuse me. He's a private detective. It's James uh, James Garner. It's okay. it's a great old show. It's got crazy music and these fun stories. It's before A Team. Same writer. And uh, but it's 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 James Garner out there just busting people down. He's a private eye. Former he was in jail, but shouldn't have had to go to jail. It's this whole cool story. But that's like going back to further television. But they only have the first three seasons. I, apparently, I think there's like seven or eight seasons. So why would they only do like we'll just take the rights for the first three seasons? <laughs> Does that make sense? No. no so I, I agree with you guys. I, 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 it was kind of messed up. Even even if you pay for it, I don't. Yeah. I have a password. Well, I bet you do. I bet you do, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> but even though he pays for it, there's there's five episodes of a, of a show, one season of a show. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. I, I don't understand Hulu. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I don't either. But they're pretty smart because they um, you can pay just a couple of dollars for them to take away the commercials. And of course, everybody's going to pay a couple of dollars to take away the commercials. I w- yeah. That's I a, mean, I would pay five dollars if I have to watch commercials. Well, don't tell them that because then they'll raise the prices on everybody. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's what it is, like five or six bucks. But it's worth it. I mean, because that's the whole point of cutting the cord is so you don't have to sit through commercials. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, same thing like with, uh, I actually have YouTube Red. Is that, so what's, is that so, pretty cool? So I, haven't, I mean, I just know they with, do. Yeah. Uh, like a music streaming service too. Okay. So it like in lieu of Spotify. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. So, but, but you go on YouTube, you never watch a single ad. Huh. Ever. No matter how long the video is, whether it's a paid. And well, and YouTube has lots of movies too now. I mean, because they had a big dump of yeah. like Paramount, they threw like older ones on there and there was a couple other. But yeah, you, if you want to watch a movie and you're not sure yeah. if you can find it for free yeah. before you start like searching illegal websites or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. go on YouTube and search it. You might actually find it. You might find it. That's yeah, cool. but they charge for those movies. No, not all of them. So. Not all of them. No, seriously, Paramount and I, I think Warner Brothers, a couple of the older, you know, the majors from the back in the day, they released a lot of their older films on YouTube for free. Hmm. And you can go there and, you know, so anywhere, plug in YouTube. YouTube, come uh, support this show. <laughs> you know, I guess we, we plugged a lot of stuff already. We should be keeping that. We don't, we don't have any sponsors. Not yet. So we well, can that's, kind of say what we want. I know, but they might be interested. Be like, hey, yeah, and then we can, you can awesome. do, a little, you can do a little jingle farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. That's a little drink break. You want another one? Uh, sure, why not? Here, I'll go grab one. Do you guys just cut it like right there, or are we just still on? No, we'll be on. We'll be on. Okay. We're no, but I mean, on. but you stop right there, and then, or is it? We're still talking. Yeah. Still, still going. going. What, what do you want to say something? There's so much to say. No. <laughs> this is nice. This is good. This is just this is nice. We should promote uh, Ranya Vitamin Oh. What'd you do today? Today, um, what was today? Today was pretty uneventful. Just, well, I mean, it was eventful. You were late. Uh, <laughs> by like 12 minutes. And that's because, uh, no, nine minutes, 5.09. But anyway, there was getting here, um, just traffic, man. The 26 said there was no traffic. And then there was. So then I got off the 26 and then cut down Burnside. Took Burnside up 405 and, you know, it was just like, you never Same know. Same thing as last time. Uh, you, no, last time there was no, the Burnside Morrison. Bridge was out. No, the Burnside, Mor- no, the, uh, yeah, the Morrison was out and the Burnside yeah. was totally, but so that, that was ridiculous. The 405 was already jammed. Had to go south, had to get, had to go down to get up. <laughs> I was, I was in Portland. I was going to go back to, I was going to go back home before we were going to drive together up here, but, uh, I think. There was uh, another accident going south. Well, this, I, 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 doing it on the weekends is the better time anyway. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, the 26, I shouldn't even try it, but sometimes it's, you never know. Anyway. Yeah, going through the tunnel is a nightmare. Ah. 
So uh, a while ago, I was thinking about doing like a. Have you ever thought about doing a, a YouTube channel where you where you put where you you produce some dialogue between you and somebody else? That's fine. There you go. <laughs> Trying to keep it out of the blow up uh, blow up the I'll engineer's ears. He'll be like, yo. Like a lot of YouTubers do like skits. Uh, yeah. Have I thought? I think those are fantastic. Um, can't remember any of the names of any of them, but I know people have had success, and I think that's a great thing. YouTube in general is a fantastic thing, being able to just express yourself, put your videos out there, especially if they're, you know, all uh, good messages and stuff like that, or as good as we can make them, right? But um, I, I think that's it's a creative outlet. I, I can't think of this dude's name. There's some actor, he's blonde hair, and he runs around doing pranks, and it's like really quick, 10 seconds. It's hilarious. Russian? No, he's American. It's really funny, though. But there's tons of people like that, and I think that's why I could love... What is it? Fail Army. You guys ever watch that? Yeah. Yeah. Fail Army. And then there's the other one where he, uh, humans are great or what's it called? And you see people doing amazing things. I mean, that's that's why the Internet is fantastic. Well, my, my point was, like, you could promote yourself, your writing skills if you... If oh, yeah. But see, here's the thing. Yeah. I, I totally... Let me first... Sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm picking up what you're laying down. But it's, uh, it's just... I don't feel that... You got to have other people do that for you. Because maybe I'll do it on stuff like this, you know, or like talk shows or whatever. But I'm not like going to actively, I don't know, it's weird. It's like I would rather have a have a venue where I go to as opposed to a place where I'm opening up to other people. Does that mean, they're not opening up, but I mean like opening up like, hey, I'm selling this today or I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? Like, or talking about my stories or like, what do you mean? Literally, literally all I'm saying is like, even if it wasn't you, you yeah. take like two or three people. Yeah. And write a short story. Oh, okay, gotcha. Get clever with a five-minute short story. Sure, and, and then put it on YouTube. Act it out and film it with sure. writing or whatever. I, I actually, it. yeah, okay. So Probably stuff like that. Your, so you don't mean just like you, you just mean like skits. I thought you meant yeah. like doing like skits and stuff like that. You yeah. mean like actually doing skits as sections like, five, like a five-minute short story. Okay, okay, okay. Why? Well, hey, I'd be down for any of that. I mean, I but I wouldn't want to be the person who's like trying to gather everybody together. I wouldn't want to produce something like that. Like I like producing other things, but something like that, I, I, you know, I think it's fantastic to get the word out there. I know a couple, like I've met a bunch of people who would be interested in doing that. Yeah. Well, I'd be down. Let's do something. Let's create yeah. some. No, I, I've got, I've got stuff. I have ideas for, um, short skits, things that could be like web series or whatnot. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd be the guy that'd be running around hitting people in the side of the head, you know, like that one guy. Cause then they probably take, I'm a big no, person. No, I don't need pranks. So <laughs> He's talking about he's well that's what you said and then okay, anyway okay okay you don't mean like pranks you mean like uh, I'm talking about like you you write like a five mi five minute like interaction that right it could be funny it yeah. could be like whatever I got it. so like a web a series drama. I'm down let's create one let's do it <laughs> and we'll, we'll we'll promote it here what do you say yeah we're gonna go in the hood and step on everyone's shoes yeah just be like hey happen. man are those my shoes but I don't think that'll work I've got size thirteen so that's <laughs> tough I think I get what you're trying to stay yeah. say though you. Your main focus is to kind of stay in your lane. Yeah, basically. stay in my lane, like, because that's why I'm. I consider you know myself more of a behind the the scenes kind of person. Because um, I oh. that's that's more <laughs> that's I think it's more enjoyable just to I I because I don't mind the responsibility or anything like that, and I love to perform. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't. I thought specifically you're talking about doing skits and stuff like that, and I was like, I don't know. I think it'd be fine. It depends on the material, huh? How about that? <laughs> when, when I think skit, yeah. I just think like. Short story. Short story. Okay. Well, those are two very different things. So that's where my mind What's goes. a skit? A skit is like a, a really quick thing. It's like something that's usually improv, but sometimes it could be like a vine. Uh, yeah, it could be like that. Yeah, sure. There you go. So oh. maybe a skit is structured a little differently. Yeah, I think. Well, story. I think a skit is has more as less structure than a short story. Right. I guess that's where I'm going. Short story. Coming from a writer's perspective, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why when you said skit, that's where my went. My, oh, okay. my man went to. There we go. There's some uh, semantics for you. <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't like when I shake the whole building. Oh, you're doing a little oh, shake. He shakes little... his leg. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting on the same stool. Oh, no, I got you. No, that's the. It bounces me. And uh, it's the. Uh, it's not fun. It's the. No, that happens. It's like the comfy leg. You just got to shake it out. It's my grandpa used to do that. My uncle or great uncle, yeah, I, too. I think it might be. You like it? My brother does it. Yeah. I think it might be a genetic thing. It is. No, it is. The I do it, too. Thing. I usually do it. You just sit there and let your foot just, wag on the couch. I put your right arm up in the air and just twist your wrist. Wow, that wouldn't be a little bit weird. I think some of us just need to get our energy out and we've found an avenue. There you go. Which that's we true. can control our Shake energy. others around you. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't think it's intentional. Well, I think maybe next time just switch to the big bench you guys are on. 
And you can just have single Maybe chairs. Maybe I'll go sit by Jason. No, no, no. I'll, I'm just, I'm just, I'll start shaking my leg. I'm too tall for, for that. I'm, I'm sitting here big enough by myself. I need a, a back. I need a back brace or something. No, I'm just kidding. It's good times, gentlemen. Good times. Good times. So what different type of genres do you like to write in? Well, here's the thing about writing is you never want to pigeonhole yourself. That's what my personal, you know, experience. So um, I, I no like... No specific type. I, that's exactly right. Because then you don't want to limit yourself. Obviously, you know that. But um, I love uh, action adventure. I love uh, the Western I wrote. That was a lot of fun. We were going back to... Uh, here's a question. You were asking me how long does it take to write scripts. It depends on the script. Like the Western, that took like... Because uh, I, I really like read all the old school books. And it was like how they speak, how they talk. Because I really wanted to catch everything. The characterization is huge in a Western, obviously. But so that one took like six, seven months. I mean, that was to get like the first draft done. But when I do a first draft, I try to have it be as, you know, close to the final draft as possible, so to speak. Right. But you never know. I mean, final draft, it's never up to you, the writer, for the most part. Um, but uh, anyway, okay. yeah. I'm going to say one thing. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. And just one thing. That's all I can say. Just one thing. Two words. Two words. And you just tell me, just, just talk about it. What? Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey? Do you want to talk about what in two words? I just want to know your thoughts. I'd say I'd say too bad. Too Was bad. I'd say. <laughs> too bad. So sad. No, uh, there's a couple. I think there's interesting. I think it's a great conversation that's out there in the industry because this has obviously been going on for a long time, and that's not news. But how bad it was, I don't think anybody knew. And then whether it's the Kevin Spaceys or the Weinsteins, or I shouldn't be name dropping or anything like that. I, I, you know, I don't know the stories, and the, but it all sounds pretty freaking terrible. And it's like uh, this one director I respect big time, James Gunn. He directed, uh, like, uh, wrote and directed Guardians of the Galaxy, and he did a bunch of quirky, fun films. He did Slither. I don't know if you saw that one. It's a great science fiction film. But he said, if even like one fourth of what they're saying is true, then this is just you know scumbag city. Didn't everyone know that? Hollywood was fucked up the way Well, it of course everything is, but so is the political system. I'm sure that there's, I mean, look at Roy Moore right now. You look at people like that, where that guy's been sexually harassing people supposedly, allegedly, for, you know, 40 years or plus. So the guy got naked and like... I don't know. They've all been oh, getting naked, was, apparently. Uh, it's Louis C.K. Louis C.K. I, they've all been doing it. It's terrible. And Louis C.K., even, you know, they, all those stories came out, and he admitted it right away. He's like, I did it. I'm sorry. And he apologized. And, and all his stuff got canceled. Well, of course, but then he said goodbye, because he's like, he knew he was done, like, for whoever knows how long. But wow. like, everything got canceled. Canceled. The agent fired him, management, like everybody let him go. The movie's canceled. Jeez. Netflix gone. Like he's done. And he knew it too. And that's why he admitted it because, you know, he did wrong. And he's like, I did everything wrong. I should have supported these people and like been more of an inspiration. But instead, I was a monster. And that's what, not a, as bad of a monster. I mean, they're all comparable monsters. I don't know how you want to, comp how do you compare those things really? It's, it's, but they're all terrible. That's how you can equate it to me. You know, that's how I think. Yeah. Do you think it's kind of, like they didn't it was kind of unfair not not unfair to them but they it was so Which normal people? it was so normal back then like the whole culture of the entire thing yeah uh, well I think that's unfortunate I don't know if it's so much normal as it, it is unfortunately expected because there are those stories we all know about them where people have to do certain things to get a job you know whether it's sleeping with somebody or whether it's you driving their laundry for a month to the who knows um, I'm sure it's probably you know the latter um, or the former whichever former. one that is the yeah, former, former the former <laughs> see I caught myself though um, the it, I just it's been going on I mean there's stories like going back to the days of Richard Zanuck and uh, I was just reading about Alfred Hitchcock and how he was uh, on the set of the birds and he was just uh, an absolute menace to um um what's her name what's her name tipper, uh, tipper. see we should have a google thing right here you yeah, look it up we should actually here, look up, look up we should have a computer we right, need right a young here jamie huh yeah right we just need a little compete we need somebody to go on there you go you know that's something there's a good sponsor room for us like the new echo <laughs> or the new siri that we can just you know ask uh, random trivia questions that's actually one of my first writing jobs ever. You guys want to hear a great story? Was writing for a trivia company. It was uh, called... Tippy Hedren? There it is, Tippy. That's what I was trying to say, Tippy. Uh, anyway, Alfred Hitchcock was really creepy with her. He had a private entrance to her dressing room that nobody else could go in. I was just reading about this. This is all true. Did she know about it? Yeah, of course, because he would come in. He was the only one that would come in that way. He would tell people not to talk to her. He also apparently had a... 
a, a plaster replica of her face made. I just read about all this, and I just these things kind of stick in my head. Wow. Yeah, but uh, like I said, because for trivia, did she like it? I definitely do not think she did. And and then I'm sure it was even worse because <laughs> what does it was, he look like? Who Alfred Hitchcock? Yeah, He's a big scary. I just man. imagine short, fat, and bald. That's what he was. It's pretty much what most of them are, unfortunately. And there is definitely an archetype, oh, a is. stereotype. Yeah, exactly what you. Said. You've never seen what Alfred Hitchcock. You never seen Alfred Hitchcock presents. Like like that's a fantastic no. from the black and white. That's him right there. there. Is. Anthony Hopkins did a movie with, about him, and that was pretty good. But uh, that guy was, uh, you know, apparently there was a lot of them. And it goes Richard Zanuck from Fox. I mean, like, I read stories about that guy. And, you know, I'm not saying anything that's not known. It's out there. But people are finally talking about it. I think that's the main thing that's happening is the conversation's being opening. So Yeah, maybe maybe it's just these people in positions of power. Yeah. They maybe are, are no, losing to, to, yeah. The, to the Internet. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. it's so easy. I mean... People can try to silence you, but within a second, you can tell the entire world. Something. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're famous. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, look who we have in the White House. We don't have to really go there, but <laughs> listen to what the things he said, and he's still got in the House, you know, and the, some of the things that other people have done or said have gotten him fired from everything, but instead that guy got rewarded and put in the White House. You know, there's more claims against him, uh, you know, than, uh, I don't know, whatever your politics are, but I just, I would like somebody that's classy and somebody I could believe in, and the things and he said and done in his lifetime, do not make me stand and behind him. You know what I mean? And so whatever that means, but that's just, uh, that's, it's unfortunate because it'd be great to have somebody we could all believe in, you know, somebody that unified as opposed to split up. Anyway, no preaching. It'd I'm off, good, I'm off the soapbox. It would be good to believe in somebody yeah. and have them follow through yeah. at, at the same time. Yeah. Not just... Yeah, Not exactly. Either or. Is that ever going to happen, though? Because it's politics. Like, what, what, you know, people still complain about Obama. I liked Obama for a lot of reasons, but there's certain things. He didn't do everything right, but he did his best, and he actually tried. And he didn't, like, tweet every second while he's using the facilities, you know? It's like. He uh, tweeted, though. Uh huh? He tweeted. But not bit. like, but not like this, this, he per, this per, got current, the funny, current guy. I, I just have to say the funniest okay. tweet. Uh,. <laughs> I gotta, look it, I gotta look it up for Vader because it's so funny. Which, which one? It's about They're Kim all Jong so un. Uh, which one? Where he calls him Rocket Man? No, that one was That's so terrible. Funny. So no, scary. No, it was a. Uh, we gotta write a list though. Seriously, get... Deadwood. You guys need to watch that. Justified. I mean, those those I'm are great you, I'm westerns. I'm gonna be gone for six months if you make it. Okay. Well, so you just put it you put it on your iPad or iPod or whatever. I mean, to a certain degree, depending on what you do. Yeah. If, you know, if you want to be writing scripts or anything like that. The most important thing you can do is consume what you want to produce. Absolutely, I agree 100. Do, do you find yeah, that but at helps the same time? Lot? Yeah, yeah, let's a go. A lot of Lonnie. people don't do that because they don't want to write something like somebody else. Well, no, that's true. You don't want to be that person who is. Uh, Trump, President Trump tries to be best friends with uh, Kim Jong. -un. No, no. Let okay, I'm over it. Okay, okay you find it. Wait till you find it. But no, I hear what you're saying, and um, it, it's more like. Um, I don't know what 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 was the main point, Josh? You were just saying it's people don't it's like more like, like musicians like they they won't listen to other music yeah. for six months while they're writing an album yeah because yeah. they don't want to well they don't want to be super them. heavily influenced so I get that part but at the same time I think it's great because especially if you're like me somebody who's trying to create out of thin air when you're just sitting there in front of the computer or sitting with a pen and paper. Um, watching that stuff, it's just good to hear people talking. Good to see see different things, but it's also good to break from your norm. But I hear what you're saying you don't want to be too compared to. But it's like that can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. Like I, the Western Here that I wrote, is. yeah. Why would Kim Jong Un insult me by calling me old? When I would never call him short and fat. Oh well, I try so hard to be his friend. Maybe someday that will happen. That's so weird. I, I like triple check to see if that was real. It is it's really real. Funny. It's really real. It's real. Yeah. So he basically did a backhanded like, oh, well, I wouldn't call him short and fat, but you just did. You know, it it's so like you just did. You know. Oh Maybe man. Not. I, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is like he's good for a laugh. He is. Sometimes. If you're a reality show guy, and it's like you know, Jim Jeffries is a fantastic comedian uh, from Australia. He's got his own show on Comedia, uh, Comedy Central, which is brilliant show and it's about time he has a, a good pulpit to speak from because he's got a lot to say look up his stuff on the second amendment I mean because I I, I I understand that but like Jeb Jeffries like he's got 
several clips on there. This is basically what we put on the map. I was aware of him before, but he's brilliant. Anyway, he's on all the time, and he's talking about you know Trump, and he's just he's another one of those people that are just not letting the BS slide, so to speak. You know what I mean? That's really Dude, calling that's it out. Literally everybody. You know, well, but there are some people. No, but then you have people like Fox News, whatever. It's I don't know, but that's the world. That's what's going to be. So what? So Trump's gone. Then it's going to be the opposite. Then people are going to be mad. There's a Democratic president. It's like it's going to go on. Why can't there just be one it's, president? It's constant. Yeah, I know. But why can't there just be one for all, all for one? That's you know what's yeah. what's the point? Because oh. otherwise it just splits people up. Are you saying up, everyone right? should join the Trump bandwagon? No, <laughs> definitely not. Heck no, absolutely not. So there's a new. I, I watched a clip, like an eight minute clip of a new. Do you know Nick Swartzen? Yes. Uh, it's called Typical Rick. Okay. And Chris Delia was was a uh, director on it. Okay. Dude, it was so funny. That show, I haven't watched anything past that clip, but it was hilarious. But everything, okay, well, it at least so funny. He prefaced it that way. He's like, I haven't watched anything else but that clip, but I really enjoyed it. It was good. That's good. So, so going, going back yeah. to what we were talking about, right. uh, so consuming what you want to produce, right. what I've heard from other people and the research I've done yeah. is people have expectations. Mm -hmm when they're going to watch a certain type of movie. If they're going sure. to watch a, a, a Western, mm -hmm. they're like, well, there's there's got to be gunfights. Yeah. There's got to be... There's certain tropes you got to hit, certain right, little right. archetypes of a story. So, Absolutely. So, I mean, to me, that's the importance of consuming what you want to create because right. it's more of like a, a reminder of what you're aiming for. Right. Not that you're looking to cop anybody, yeah. but... You know, there's certain types of scenes. You think you'd be happen. too, too inf or you, or you might be too influenced by something else that you've just watched or read. Maybe is that kind of what you're saying? No, yeah. I'm saying like the opposite. That oh. it's important to have that influence. Oh, okay, from, got you. From other people's. You know, because some of it's just ingrained in your head. Cause right. You, you know, with a Western, you need guns. You yeah. know, you need horses yeah. and thieves. Yeah, well, you need themes like isolation, desperation, right. revenge, redemptions, you right. know, salvation, all that kind of great stuff. And um, fortunately, my Western has that. Yeah. Waka waka. Dude, <laughs> this is the beginning of it. Yeah. Well, that's well, and that's the other thing you're talking about is like being compared to or being. It's not always the worst thing because a lot of people. Um, well, the most. You know, I haven't shared it with a lot of people. I've shared it with the right people. Supposedly, hopefully, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, it's it's being compared to Quentin Tarantino, which is really not a bad comparison. Yeah. So that's we, so that's different. Like so, if you're being compared to that, that's not terrible. But at the same time, you'd be like, oh, who's this kid trying to write like or be like me? But uh, the truth is, the very first beginning of this story started before uh, before Django even came out. So I don't oh, know when yeah. he I don't know when he finished his first draft of Django, but I definitely beat him on the actually getting the Western end. He just beat me on actually getting it made because he's Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's, and you've seen both of those. So you saw Django, obviously, and then you saw, no, you haven't. Dude, Django's incredible. Okay, all right, all right. Josh, he hasn't that. seen Django. You, yeah, should no, definitely, you should definitely, um, are you a fan of Quinn at all? Yeah, yeah, I like some of what's, his what's his, What's your favorite that he's talking about? Uh, what was that Nazi one? Did he do that? Uh, yeah, Glorious Bastards. Yes, yeah. it's not. Yes, it is definitely a Nazi one, but it's uh, a more anti-Nazi yeah. one, I would say. <laughs> if anything, but it's like interesting because they. Here's one for you. You guys, so you don't really keep up on the industries. Uh, I mean, you do, but you not like me because I'm a dork for not it. Like you. But, no, I'm, that. I'm a dork for it. But anyway, I do it more with music. So Quinn's doing the number nine. That's his ninth film out of all of his things, and it's going to be about Charles Manson. And um, that would be amazing. Yeah, and right now he's like putting it all together. But his whole thing is he was with the wine. Weinstein Company. That's he like built the Weinstein Company. I mean, because he all of his movies uh, going back to Reservoir Dogs were first it was uh, Miramax and then it was the Weinstein Company, which so, is one of my favorite movies. He, so he actually had to break away from he had to break away from the company because of you know when I feel like he did that a while ago. No, he just did this now because oh. of the whole Harvey Weinstein thing. So Quinn is now he just went out and courted like I said to all the studios. I've got my script ready. I know people that want to do it, and so all the studios come in and bid. Like I, someday, knock on wood, we can talk about this because that's how I want it to be is that he everybody come to him no and then he would go to the studios and they would set it up like it was a movie premiere from the 60s because that's when the film takes place late 60s 70s or he'd go to Sony and they'd have the whole marketing and advertising like all totally ready for him and people would be dressed up like they were from the 60s or 70s and they have antique furniture so anyway the ninth film will now be produced by Sony they're the ones who won the bidding war wow yeah so it was Sony Warner Brothers and then Paramount obviously was up in there so that's awesome that's anyway so I just yeah Quinn that guy I don't know. Go, I guess going back to them saying, "Oh, this reminds me of that." That's you, comparisons are not always terrible. He just seems to 
correct me if I'm wrong, just, no. he, he seems to just only want to make movies. He doesn't want to be involved in anything else. No, I mean, because he's only made nine films you since... You never really hear anything about the, him in the early 90s. No. He's just always working. Yeah, the only thing you heard about him is when he was speaking, right, rightfully so, uh, out against violence against predominantly African Americans. And he was speaking out against cops not really thinking first and, you know... And that's the only time he's really been in the national news. There's, I'm sure there's other stories, but that's really, you know, as far as I can tell, he seems like a, a, a person who just wants to make movies. Awesome. You know, like me. <laughs> that's all. I just want to make movies. Make yeah. Movies, I don't want to. It's like Tupac. Level. Tupac said, uh, what was it? Uh, all I want is money. F the fame. I'm a simple man. <laughs> <laughs> but he actually used the full words, but I don't know if we're dropping F-bombs here. I don't know. I don't you know. can do whatever. No, it's all right. I don't know. Okay. Anywho. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Is there anything you want to, uh, yes, you have so many things that you can't. Well, there are some things I can't talk about. Um, what are you checking for? You keep checking. No, my phone. It's because I put my oh. phone over here. I was just seeing what time seeing if the wifey is called. Uh, cause you always got to check on that dude. Yeah. Um, what other things, what can I talk about? Um, well, what do you want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? How well like plug, plug wise, pl I don't really want to plug anything, but I, what I will talk about is, uh, reanimate assassins. That's another one that I've sent to you, Josh, That's to check one out. That you sent that I yeah. So you. that one's like, uh, essentially what was the last coverage that was done? Coverage is basically you sent it. There's a company that I, uh, um, gets it to a person who does coverage on the script. Then you get the notes back and they compare it to zombie land meets enter the dragon. So that was pretty cool. Cool. Pretty good comparison. Um, so that one super excited about talk to other people about that. Hopefully one shoot that in like, uh, uh, Eastern Oregon is the ultimate goal, but they don't have enough. Um, uh, the rebates aren't as good. So it might end up being shot in Vancouver, supposedly then it takes place in Oregon. So I don't know. Cause my goal is to have films that are shot, uh, filmed, I mean, the whole shebang in, in Oregon, here. in yeah. Oregon, and because there's the topography here in Oregon is amazing. Like the you could shoot everything from desert scenes to ocean scenes to I mean, there's even places that are somewhat tropical looking. They have sand dunes. There's the mountains. There's I mean, they have every kind of thing you could possibly want for, you know, different scenes. So it's a no brainer if they could just get more money back to the productions that come up here. That's the that's the real struggle for me. You got to read that one. Yeah, well, that's, you know, finish, finish, uh, Hell Comes to Montana. Mm -hmm. And then, um, cause that's, I mean, cause you, where'd you at? You're like page 40. Dude, I was at like page 40. And then I was like, Hey, read this one, read this one. <laughs> and then I got that one. I yeah. read that one like two uh, yeah. hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, dude. Well, I needed you to read that cause I had to get. Sidetracked while you were down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I had to get that one down. Well, just finish that. And then if, you know, whenever you guys do this again, we can talk about it. Yeah. But it's, uh, no, if you're like at page 40, that's really when it starts the, it, it, the, all the story elements of the Western, like we were talking about, you know, isolation, redemption, uh, salvation, re uh, it's all the beginning, but then it just takes a, takes a little twist, takes a little flip and you're like, I'm, I'm excited when you're, so what, what do you want to be? You're also a producer, correct? Correct. Yeah. I started with, um, the first thing I ever produced was a documentary called playing for change. Um, it's a documentary on street musicians across America. It was shot in, in LA, New Orleans, and New York. This was like in the early 2000s. It's on YouTube. It's they're still a, doing it, right? Yeah, they're still doing it currently. Um, and that's like become its own little beast. That was the first thing I produced. And then now it's become, and then actually after that, it was uh, into the talent business and I was help running a talent agency. Then I left that. Um, and just predominantly has just been focused on uh, creating you know, films, writing, Wri writing first and then ultimately directing. Cause like I said, the last couple proof of concepts, um, I've directed or co-directed them. So that's always something I've always wanted to aspire to is, you know, cause that's another way maybe that's control freak in me, but you can have a little more say and what goes on the film as opposed to just like, here, I wrote this script. You want to buy it? And then you pass it to him. I like, don't care how it goes. Yeah. No, yeah just, just chop it up. Yeah. And then they chop it, it up. Yeah, exactly. And then you just sold it to him. So like, that's the other reason. At the right why, price. Yeah. Well, for sure. And that's the other reason why uh, people, when they work in the studio, cause there's a studio industry independent and in, in film level, they're both the same. Cause you have Fox searchlight, you have, um, you know, different branches of companies, uh, even the major studios that are supposedly independent level. Lionsgate is a huge company, but they're technically independent because they're all by themselves. Anyway, that's something we can talk about in, in its entirety. That's an yeah, interesting man. story. But the independent level is it's just different because it's more about um, 
uh, it's just smaller stories on some scale. You know what I mean? That are that people are like, okay, it's not just you know outer space, which I love those. Don't I can't wait for Star Wars. Just bought my tickets the other day. Yeah, uh, be- yeah. Don't get me wrong, but I just I, I sometimes like the smaller stories. You know, like Poacher. When you finish reading that, that's just a it's a dramatic thriller. It's about a father and son. I always like the smaller stories. I, lo- I love yeah. them. Yeah, and it's just like it's really it's about the people. It's about the actions. About where they start at the beginning and where they end at the end, and like you know taking the audience on that journey, and you want the audience to really, um, you know, go on the journey willingly and not be like, it's forceful. And they're like, okay, when is this over? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I'm probably not going to watch Star Wars on Christmas. Well, you don't have to. It comes out December 5th or 14th, technically, right? Oh, it's not Christmas Thursday. Here? It's Thursday. No, it's a couple weeks before. Oh. So you can, you can see it on Christmas, though. I'm sure a lot of people will see it on Christmas. <laughs> I've been avoiding all the trailers. I'm trying to... I'm trying to box myself out of knowing anything about it. I, well, didn't, I didn't finish the last one. Wow. I just watched half of it. Josh, you're fired, dude. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what to tell you, man. I just can't even... Uh, well, so I understand, but I've actually really enjoyed watching the trailers because I, I want to see a little bit of what's going on. They're hardly giving anything away. I, the only thing I heard so far is that Ray might have a red lightsaber. That's Well, that's I, they've cool. only shown... Oh my, god. oh, my God. I know, but they've only shown blue. Well, see, you don't get it you're, if you're going to make fun of us. <laughs> you don't get it. Like, I grew up on this movie. Like, I even dude, said that in the beginning, you're, but I said like literally my mom would rent me the movie like VHS tapes yes yeah. right, you didn't grow VHS. up on these movies though no 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 That's but they're true. in his blood this is true I'm definitely a Star Wars I would, I would get a Star dude, Wars tattoo I got tattoo. a red lightsaber in my pocket no I got well look dude right there that's that's the company that made the toys right there Boom. Kenner yeah straight up really let me just throw a little shout out to Kenner Kenner <laughs> I don't think they're making uh, yeah no maybe they're still I know Hasbro's still making toys that's like G.I. Joe and uh, Transformers I want a real one. Transformers is the best money making scheme I've ever seen. Yeah, it's kind of become its own little Ponzi thing. I mean, uh, I, I tuned out after like the second one. I was like, okay, big loud robots, and I love them since back in the day, but I don't really care about the characters so much, and it's just big and loud. And God bless Michael Bay, but that's his wheelhouse, and that's what he does. He's just uh, yeah, he knows nothing, nothing he knows against how to him. Do what he wants to that's do. His, that's his thing, and people love that, and that's why it's been a multi-billion-dollar franchise. I'm pretty sure it's multi-billion. I know it's over at least one billion. Yeah, all the movies. I think they've five of them so far. That's the other thing too. So wait, he made t- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, he produced like it. the he, same thing. Yeah, he produced it. So he has his own production company. Oh, okay. So that's a different thing. He didn't actually direct it, so it didn't come with the Bayham. It was just really <laughs> similar. It was pretty much Transformers with turtles. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I did like that. I, you know, TMNT. That was another one growing up. That was. Yeah, I I loved the live action ones when I was a kid. Like absolutely. You know, you can even when you're a kid, you're like it's a person in a costume. Yeah, but something about like what is that called when you allow yourself to be in that world. Yeah. I forget what it's Dis- called. Dispending your disbelief. Yeah. Suspending, yeah. Suspending, suspending your disbelief. Suspending, yeah. sus- suspending <laughs> disbelief. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> suspending disbelief. Suspending disbelief. Yeah. But I, th- I think within, you know, consuming and even creating, suspending your disbelief is a really important part. Absolutely. That's one of the most important things because if people are going to go sitting there for two hours, two hours and a half, you know, sometimes three hours, you, you have to, you know, give them the reason to do that. Right. With, with science know. fiction, a lot of the time, that's my problem. Because like, you're like, this is not real. I don't get it. So enough. what about Interstellar? So that's science fiction. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, wow. Or uh, okay. what's, Dude, I live in a what's that? Uh, uh, the movie... Uh, on Mars. Oh, uh, it's uh, called Martian. Mars. Martian. Yeah. Martian. Yeah. Martian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you watch that? Great movie. Incredible. See, that was a great movie. Yeah. So that's it's, more of like a hard that, that was yeah. That was really accurate, too. Well, it was a cool story. I mean, that, that guy, he hadn't even finished a novel yet. And somehow, how did it get to them? It got to really Scott's company. And it's just one of those stories. They're like, hey, we read the first four or five chapters. We were going to turn this into a movie. And then they bought the rights. And boom, there you go. That's awesome. how it goes. So you never know. That's great. That's how it works. But uh, yeah, a fantastic film. And... Uh, and that was another one that they entered into the Golden Globes for comedy or musical. There's I a like, there's a little fun Martian, like, there's a fun yeah, little no, full the, circle for there's you. There's a lot of I, I haven't finished it yet, but uh, there's there's a lot of comedy involved in the way because it's just so like. You mean the Martian? The book or the movie? The book? No, the oh I haven't read the book. No, He's I'm reading ta- the book. Oh, I'm talking about the movie though. Right, right. Yeah, but same thing. It's same all in it. But, but like, just like he's so screwed. Yeah. 
the whole time. Like, it is. It's just like it is true. It's because it's like it's laughing, ridiculous. Yeah. Almost. It's he's almost laughing ridiculous. At himself because he's like, well, I'm probably just gonna blow up. And that was pretty. I, that's what I liked about that. It was. It was really smart. It was intelligent because it was like you know Tom Hanks castaway. It's like okay, now what? Like what are you gonna do? Yeah. It's you know, it's like what are you gonna figure out? Did you see that at least, Josh? Oh, okay. I, it's not sci-fi. All right. <laughs> that's right. All right. Ma- Mary, we're, we're writing you a list, buddy. I'm writing you a list. We're gonna write you a list. And you can talk about it. I'm, no, the only reason I say I that. Castaway. I was I was on a plane. I was feeling very emotional. It's a I tried turn. during That's the. That's uh, so horrible. Why would you ever watch that? You know, the worst one I ever watched in a plane was going out to Maui, where we're going next week. It's like my home away from home. I love that place, and we I made the idiotic mistake of watching Jaws. You know, and I love Spielberg, and, and but I love snorkeling. You ruined it. I tried no. to rewatch Jaws. It sucks. No, oh my god, are you kidding me? That movie's so good. You're it's ridiculous. So bad. Oh, I don't know if we can talk about it. Okay, well, let me just tell you this story, and then we can talk about how wrong you are, and how that film, <laughs> how that film coined the term blockbuster. It was the first film to ever make over 100 million dollars at the domestic box office, and it literally coined the term blockbuster. Look that stuff up. Anyway, so watching Jaws on the plane to Maui, love snorkeling, like I just said. What a terrible idea. So now every time I get in the water, all I can hear is Robert Shaw's voice. And, you know, it's like they have that scene where they're talking about, they build the cage and he's like talking to Richard Dreyfuss' character, Cooper. Or wait, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and then Brody's the other one. He's like, uh, sharks go in the water. Man, wait, no, he's saying, no, cage goes in the water. Man goes in the cage. Sharks in the water. He's like, farewell to you, dude. He's like, because he's like, see you later. You're the dumbest guy I've ever met. <laughs> but that's all I could hear in my head when I was snorkeling was like, he's like, cage goes in the water. Man's in the cage. Shark's in the water. <laughs> it's just like, it's so that was just every time I'm swimming around looking for sharks because it's Jaws. It's like, I remember being a kid swimming in a pool scared that there was a shark in there. Anyway, <laughs> anyway it's a great film, though. So let's talk about why it's a great film, shall we? Yeah, actually, I think that's a great idea yeah. to define, you know, as a writer, yeah. you have to know what what is needed to make a film. Well, movie. I hope so. I'm still learning. It's not good anymore. It's still learning. It's good. No, well, you're ridiculous. No, well, it's 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 still, you're, it's, I'm still learning as a writer. Like, every day is writing. And that's, like, the best advice I ever got from a writer was keep your ass in the chair. Because, I'm you know, that's mm-hmm. the only way you can ever learn is to keep trying, keep working, keep learning. And uh, But for this one, specifically, the, the writing is not only fantastic. It was, who was it? Peter Benchley, who adapted his book. And then there's a couple other people um, who took script. There was a producer. I can't remember his name. But anyway, Spielberg, this was like his first big gig in 75 or 77, whatever it was, because he did Duel first. I'm a huge film dork. You can obviously tell. Cinephile. And uh, but so this is his first big deal. Right. And everybody's like, there's no way this kid's going to do it. There's so many talk of him getting fired. And then the, the shark, which was a robot, kept breaking down and sinking under the water. So many things were going wrong. The world was against him. But from that pressure and stress, he created something that will be go down as all time. It's already one of the top films they have in the Library of Congress. They've saved it in the preservation. Like it's one of those films, like To Kill a Mockingbird, that will be around forever. I don't deny that. Yeah. When, I, when I was a kid, it was incredible. But you just said it was. I just watched it again. It was terrible. Yeah. So when somebody if says something re, like that, you can't rewatch the movie. Yes. Oh, because you know the shark or what? I mean, I don't get it. It's still you can rewatch it. Okay, look, look for stylistic elements. Look for the direction. Look for how the fact. I, I think it's a full half hour before you actually get a full look at the shark. Like, how does that work? And normally you see, it's like Alien. You don't see it till the very, you know, it's like, that's genius. Right, that, that's one of the best parts of any horror movie, in my opinion, is... The slow, like, the reveal. Signs is a good example. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't thinking. see the alien yeah. until the very end, and then you only well, see it in the television screen. Well, remember this, even before that, because I love that film, it's they're on the video, and it's the videotape in Mexico. You can yeah. see him. That scared me. I jumped in my chair. Yeah, and they're like, ah! And the camera's all, it's all shaky cam. And then you see the thing like stock by, like I jumped in my seat. I was like, cause I felt like the shaky cam for once Dude, worked for me. That was like insane. saved me. Yeah, yeah that anyway. was a great scene. But it's a, it's a reveal and you're right. You don't see him the whole movie. And, um, but there they are at the end. And it was a big, creepy, scary looking, you know, but it was very humanoid, but I guess apparently that's what they are. Is that Howard Newton on the soundtrack? Uh, soundtrack not, um, I'm not sure, but it's probably. I think it was. It's, you mean Howard Shore? No. No. Well, look it up. You got your thing? Go ahead and look it up. Let me grab it. I thought it was on an airplane. Look, composer versus uh, James Horner. I'm going to go with James Horner on that one. All right. Um, anyway. Yeah. Any other film questions? TV? Entertainment? <laughs> so, I, I'm still stuck on the Jaws thing. 
Hey, Jaws. James Newton Howard. Yeah, that's why he just... Oh, James Newton, you called that. Good job. I said Howard Newton. Well, Howard Newton, that's why it sounded backwards. And I said James Horner. Uh, so... What? It, it was? Yeah. What? Let's wrap it up. That oh, means okay. wrap it up. That's right. the that doesn't yeah. mean we're going crazy. It means wrap it up. Everyone was Everybody's going like this. It's not going crazy. We're going like, what, are you going to cut my neck? No, we're saying cut, cut. All right, well. Well, cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Thanks for the vitamin R's. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for yeah. coming cheers. in. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, uh, we'll have you on again. Well, next oh, time sorry. next time you'll actually finish, uh, you'll watch a couple shows. Maybe you'll be done with the uh, Game of Thrones. Maybe you'll fucking get a film produced. Look at this guy, dropping F-bombs. Oh. Dropping F bombs. Excuse me. First one of the night comes at the end of the he night. He wants that explicit sign on. Yeah, the there we go. That's good. You guys are in trouble. Don't forget YouTube. Uh, this show is available for, uh, you know, uh, they need a. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> we know it's good. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. Cheers. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. All right. Good night.